And now the last speaker on this session here also will be Bengt Larsson. You, you already been introduced a bit then also in, in Fisk Online also with some pictures here. But you have to continue the story now also then, yeah. Bengt. So please, tell us more. Yes. You can help me with this, maybe. Not to be working. Is it here? No, no it's. Uh, it was working you previously. Had it, you, yeah. had it, you had it before. Yes. I had it on a stick. Oh, so please, we take it over and stick then instead. Then also, I'm sorry for this. Disk. Uh, that Baltic Sea Future. Okay, here yeah. we go. Yeah, here we go. Thank you. And you see this now here. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. I am uh, going to tell you a story about how I, as a fisherman, had been a through a journey, from as you can see, from quantity to quality. And I will do it uh, quite fast here, because it's only 50 minutes, so I'll do it in three parts. Uh, about who I am, and what fishery I'm use, and uh, a little bit about the fishery politics, and uh, then about the, the, the main goal here, is this Fisk Online. Uh, and how uh, the journey was to to get there from a, a, an idea to a, a real thing. Um, so I begin with this. An early start. Um, as you can see, I have been uh, in the fishery for quite a long time. And uh, uh, we start to search backwards and uh, we stopped when we had the three gen six generations before me had been fishermen and um, almost every fisherman starts in the childhood and be uh, with their dads and so on in, in early early time and my dad has uh, had a special way to do it, so I didn't be afraid of all the big pikes. Um, this is the, the region I come from, in the southeastern part of Sweden. Uh, you can see uh, I turn around the, the main fishing areas. I'm a small scale fisher, and I s I'm fishing uh, both in the archipelago and out in the sea. And uh, when I'm in the archipelago and near the coast, near, I am alone on the boat. And when you go longer journeys, I have uh, crew members, one crew member. And this is my boat. It's built in steel in 1978. And uh, it's a 10 and a half meter or 35 feet. Uh, and um, that I'm fishing with is like uh, Gustav talked about before is uh, passive gears and uh, it's uh, been uh, the main fishery has been with gill nets uh, but also with long lines uh, bottom long lines uh, for cod and uh, now in the latest years now I've been even uh, been fishing with the cages in the project with the Swedish uh, 
SLU, SLU. I don't know what it's, what it's called. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. The, and uh, the main uh, species is cod, but also flounders, and uh, have a quite big fish for the turbots too. I always also has the, uh, before been fishing uh, salmon with long lines, floating long lines. But there was a political decision in 2012 that we shouldn't uh, do that fishery anymore. So we don't have any fishery in, of uh, salmon in the South Baltic because it's only one fisherman left to do that. Uh, I've always been fishing with herring uh, in the archipelago uh, with Persane and the land knot uh, before. And uh, here's some pictures from my boat. It's the machine who pulls up the, the net, like this. Uh, the cod fishery. Uh, I think uh, Gustav and I had could uh, stood here side by side and talked about uh, the selectivity, but we didn't know what we should be talking about. Uh, but uh, do you can see this? Uh, it's uh, quite the same size of all the, all the fish. Gustav told uh, you before how it uh, is going, but now it's real pictures, not cartoons, it's real pictures now. Uh, and here the, the, the nets come in and we uh, pull up off the, the fish from the nets. And uh, here's some pictures inside, this is the, the wheelhouse with all the uh, technical equipments. And uh, we used to um, joke about when we are out uh, for more than one day that we are living in a flat for two square meters. And in, in this area should be all, all, all kind of things, the clothes and so on. And yeah, you do the daily, <laughs> the daily stuff. Uh, now to the fish stocks and, 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 uh, and uh, this, I was thinking about the one big keyword when I was doing this presentation back home, and that is sustainability. It's the whole keyword we have to think about. Uh, we can think about the sustainable fish stocks, sustainable fishing gears, but also the socio-economic sustainability. As uh, no one talks so much about that, because th that is the most important for, the, for that kind of the, the fishing that I am doing, the small-scale fishery and the coastal fishery. We, we, we need coastal societies to uh, be li living and so on. But if we don't take care of the social, socio-economic uh, sustainability, uh, we had done something wrong. This is, of course, the best of the world. These who are hungry and the freeze or the refrigerator. But this is a nightmare scenario too. And I will go a step further than what Gustav told us before. I think this is very close because we see it in the fishery because when I come out about two, three nautic miles from the coast, the cods look like that was Gustav showed before. They're very thin. They don't have anything to eat. But in the coastline, there's very fat cods, but they don't eat, they don't eat herring. They don't eat sprat. They have uh, all kinds of fish in them. They have uh, uh, perches and... Uh, white fish and, and, and all kind of in, in, the, in the Karlskrona archipelago in the, in the, in the eastern of uh, our region they have a, a, a new a new food now it's the, it's the black mouth uh, what do you call it okay okay a small black fish come from the uh, southern Baltics uh, coasts uh, from Poland I think mostly because we have a ferry line and it come that way. It's a very uh, good for growing. Uh, what do we want to achieve then? Well, sea and fish stocks in balance, of course. This is it's the main goal. 
but how can we achieve these goals in fisheries policy? The name is Sustainable Fisheries Tools. It's only sustainable fishing years. And there's the passive years. Gill nets, long lines, cages, but also traps. Cages and traps. We can say the cages, we're in, in, in a, only an early start yet. This is not commercial. Uh, it wouldn't be for a long time, but we must try. We must try to develop this. And we also, in uh, some projects, uh, are using traps now in the in, uh, coastline. We must try. Uh, there's many issues to resolve. What should we have? Which, uh, who should have the right to fish? Well, the Commission now, as you have said before, the early focus. Uh, that uh, they should take advantage for uh, sustainable fishing practices. And in my opinion, it's only passive gears. Maybe eco labeled gears. I myself have been uh, had uh, eco labeled fishery in the cod fishery for uh, five years. Uh, it's, the core, it's the Swedish carp. It's uh, like uh, MSC, but uh, two levels higher uh, of demand. But uh, they also uh, uh, stop that and then take a pause. This is my favorite. I was in the supermarket back home and uh, get in the freeze and uh, found this package of cod filet. For those who don't speak Swedish or have translated, so in the package they said in the, on the, in the front side, that this cod is caught in the cold and fresh Bering Sea. When I turned it around, I said it was packed in China. This is a disaster environmentally because they are fishing the cod in the Bering Sea down to Holland, freeze it, ship it to eastern. Uh, south uh, in the in the Asia, um, take it up from the freeze and fillet it and put it in cages that it says Ica, Findus, Cup, and so on. And that was what you had to buy in the in the in the supermarket here. So, what could you do as a consumer? Wait. Okay, you have to. Uh, uh, Take the information how the fish have been caught. Of course, sustainable. Where it has been caught as locally as possible. And the landing and processing, the harbor, etc. It should be local. And who's the responsible for the, responsible for the fish? It's the fishermen. And we uh, take a, a, a small quick here about the, what the the situation is reduce stocks, uh, less profit. But uh, what I will say, the solution has been that it's my and, and my contribution contribution for uh, how the consumers should have uh, fresh fish. Uh, it's fish online. It's uh, homepage and internet selling of fish. And we are three members who is uh, responsible for this uh, with a code. And in the same time, I, as a fisherman, as a sailor, s salesman, got the same uh, code in, in, my, uh, in my cell phone. And I can uh, uh, take the, uh, the fish and pack it to the customer, and I have a, a, a time for uh, pick it up in my harbor. So the, so the customer can see it at the work and uh, do the buying in the morning and uh, go to the harbor in the afternoon and get the fresh, high-quality fish. Uh, the same day and take it home and uh, 
cook it directly. I should also say that we have been re rewarded by this. Uh, we were in a competition that was called Ostartat Unstarted as an uh, innovating idea in 2013. And we, uh, we, we won that the competition. Uh, uh, it was 73 uh, propos proportionals, and we were that who won it. And um, I should be finishing here because I hope your choice in the future when you should buy fish, you should take the sustainable choice because Fisk Online is um, is the um, handwork who's meeting the digital world. And I think if you do that choice, you'll be able to maybe see cuts in that size even in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prince. <laughs>